I've been doing some reading and I just found out something that I never knew about and I wanted to share it with you in case you didn't know. If you wanted to talk to me about anything having to do with Henry VIII and his six wives or Queen Elizabeth I of England, I could talk your ears off for hours about Henry VIII, his six wives, about his son, his illegitimate son, Lady Jane Grey, who was the Queen of England for only nine days. If you wanted to talk about Mary, like I said, I could talk your ear off. But everything starts from somewhere. You have to ask yourself the chicken or the egg. Well, to know about Henry VIII, that tells you you then have to learn about Henry VII because how did Henry VIII become king? Well, you have to trace it back to his parents. And then that's where you learn about Arthur. And that also helps understand the, well, what marriage disagreement between Henry VIII and his first wife and then his second wife as to whether or not he married his brother's sister or his brother's wife but that's a whole nother story so to go from Henry the seventh you have to then learn working your way backwards how did he become king he was not born to be king he actually won it by right of well from a a battle, um, the Battle of Bosworth, and then he won it there on the field when he killed Richard III. And when Richard III was killed, then Henry VII was crowned King of England, and then that's how the Tudor dynasty started. But then this takes you back into the War of the Roses, and then you have to ask yourself, okay, are, do you support the Yorks? Do you support the Lancastrians? And, well, that's a whole story in and of itself. But the thing that I learned was when reading about Richard III, who was looking at the Wars of the Roses, you had Henry VI for the Lancastrian side, but then on the York side, you had Edward who married Elizabeth Woodville, and then they had their daughter, Elizabeth of York, and I believe there was Cecily, they had a son, a couple more daughters, another son, Richard. If you've ever heard reference to the princes in the tower, and well, those two princes, those were the sons of Edward, but then Edward died. He had already killed off his, I guess, I guess you would say his middle brother. And that was, I want to say George, um, Duke of Clarence. And he's famously reported to have been um, put to death for treason. Remember, it's treason, just not killing brothers for no reason at all. It was for treason, but George was famously reportedly murdered, well, killed for treason by um, being ducked um, un upside down into a vat of, I believe it was a barrel of wine, probably red wine. But Edward had a younger brother who was the youngest, and that was Richard. And when Edward died, it should have, the crown should have passed to his oldest son, but then Richard the third, well, Richard, not Richard the third yet, Richard, Duke of Gloucestershire, I think it's Gloucestershire, but Gloucester, maybe that's it. But Richard came in as like Lord Protector to help his nephew, but then the nephew and his younger brother were more or less kind of put into the tower in London and slowly disappeared and just were never seen from again. And next thing you know, there's a coronation and Richard III is being crowned with his wife. So when reading about Richard III, and with that, he was only king from 1483 to 1485, but Richard III married Anne Neville. They had one legitimate child, and I believe his name, I think it was also Edward, but they only had one son, one legitimate son, but he died, I believe, about age 10. And shortly after he died, then Anne Neville died, and then, like, less than a year later, Richard died on the battlefield, and then Henry VII was crowned king. That I already knew. I've known that for many, many years. The thing I did not know was that Richard also had an illegitimate son, John, and then he also had an illegitimate daughter, Catherine. And it's Catherine that I would like to talk about today. So unfortunately, we do not know much about Catherine Plantagenet. In fact, the first reference to her is in 1484 when 
William Herbert, who originally was the second Earl of Pembroke, but then was demoted and became the Earl of Huntington. He entered into an agreement with Richard. So William Herbert, the now Earl of Huntington, he entered into a covenant with Richard, and that was at the end of February in 1484, where he agreed to marry Catherine, the base-born daughter of Richard III, and he agreed to marry her sometime before Michaelmas, which is at the end of September. And this is the first written reference that I've been able to find of Catherine. And so we really don't know who her mother was. It's presumed to have possibly been Catherine, I think it's Hote. I might be mispronouncing that. It's H-A-U-T-E. But she might have been her mother because we know around about the like mid early to mid 1470s we know that she started receiving an annual payment from Richard's East Anglian estates and even with that depending on which reference you're looking at they seem to vary a bit in 1475 I saw a reference that she was receiving a hundred shillings per year but then I saw another reference that said in 1477 she was receiving five pounds per year so maybe he just increase the price from 1475 to 1477. Maybe the references, one is wrong, one is correct, I don't know. But the one thing that is correct from all of them is that she started receiving an annual payment. The thing we don't know for sure was Catherine Plantagenet named after her mother, and then does that make Catherine Hote the one receiving the money? Does that make her her mother? But also remember he had an illegitimate son, John, John of Gloucester, and so she could have also been John's mom. We don't know for sure. So because she is an illegitimate daughter and also daughters really, their birth dates really weren't recorded much, if at all, unless they were a princess to begin with, someone of importance, but we don't know when she was born. We can only presume it was sometime between 1468 and my guess is between 1468 and 1472. The reason why I say that is Richard III, he was born in 1452. So if you know puberty, 1452, if he, say he got Catherine or whomever the mother of his daughter, Catherine, whomever he got pregnant, if he got her pregnant in say 1467, he would have been 15 or 1468, depending on when in the year she was born, he would have been 16. And so if the, whoever Richard got pregnant, if she was, well, if he was 16, then they have the daughter. And then fast forward to 1484 during this marriage contract, she would have been old enough. But even to say that Catherine would have been old enough for marriage is not always, was not always the case in the 15th century in England. I've read where the age of 12 was the age of consent for marriage, but if it's age 12 was the age of consent, then all I can ask is how can you explain Anne Mowbray? If you don't know who Anne Mowbray is, she was married at the age of five to Richard, Duke of York, who was the younger of the two princes that had been locked in the tower and then never seen from again after a set point with Richard III. And I think... I think Richard, when he married, sorry, the prince, so the young prince in the tower, when he was, I think he was four and out, I know Anne Mowbray was five when this happened. And so, well, obviously the marriage was not consummated, but they had the religious ceremony and everything was set in stone. More or less, Anne Mowbray was um, a very wealthy child, and so it's such a reason to have money within the royal family. So I digress. But with Catherine Plantagenet, if we'll, we'll just say for argument's sake, she was born in 1470 when William Herbert went entered into this covenant with Richard III to agree to marry Catherine. This was done in February of 1484, so that would have made her roughly maybe 13, turning 14. She may have already been 14. She would have been above the age of 12 for the age of consent for most people. And there are only a few other references to Catherine. So the first one is that's written that we can find, and that is this marriage covenant 
where he agrees to marry her. That's in February. By May, it looks like they are already married by May of 1484 because Richard had given them, it was manners in, I'm trying to remember, it was Somerset, Devon, and I think Cornwall was the other one. But it's written that he gave them manners and for both William and his wife, Catherine. So we know by May 1484, William had married Richard's illegitimate daughter. And then we see there's another reference to William and his wife, Catherine. And that is, I believe, in March of 1485, where Richard had given them some more, I believe it was um, another, I want to say it was just money that he had given them, but it may have been an estate. I just remember he gave them something again in March of 1485. Then, if you know your history, later in 1485, Richard died at the Battle of Bosworth. Henry VII was crowned king. And then, like, we see or hear nothing of Catherine Plantagenet again until, uh, well, we don't know exactly when she died. But it is recorded when Elizabeth of York, when she was had her coronation so married henry the seventh and then had her coronation to be crowned queen and at, at that coronation it was recorded that william herbert was a widow well widower we do know that catherine plantagenet was buried at a church called saint james in london but with that unfortunately there was a great fire of 1666 and in this great fire a total of 84 churches were destroyed and that includes St. James and they did rebuild the church but pretty much nothing remained of the original building so unfortunately there is no marker nothing and what's even really sad is that when because William died I believe in 1591 and per his will he wanted to be buried next to his first wife the one whom he loved the most. So, what can I say? In the 15th century and even in the 16th century, marriages were made, especially among royalty and the, the higher-ups between the dukes and the duchesses and the, the counts and the countesses. Marriages were made due to money, blood relation, keeping it all in the family. I'm sorry if I've rambled and talked your ear off about this, but I was simply fascinated to go down this rabbit hole because when I learned that Richard III had two illegitimate children, I, I was surprised because, like I said, I can talk your ear off for hours, if you can't tell by this video, I can talk your ear off for hours about anything Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth, and because that's what I focus on when I do any of my research for either garb or my black work embroidery. I, I absolutely love it, so I could talk your ear off about it, but to know about them, then you have to learn about the history to understand how they came to be, and then that's how you learn about Henry VII, and then the War of the Roses, and learning about Richard III, but all I'd ever read was that Richard III had married Anne Neville, who, even with that, that's a whole nother dynamic, a whole nother thing that's kind of interesting to learn where he married Anne, but then the sister, the older sister to Anne had married George, Duke of Clarence, who was the older brother to Richard because when their father, who was known as the Kingmaker, died, it made both sisters very wealthy. And then with that, so George married the older sister so he could try to control all of the money, but then Richard married the younger sister so he could take her and half of the estate which meant the brothers kind of butted heads, but that's a whole nother story. But with Richard III, he married Anne, they had one son, and so I only knew of the one son, and then the son died when he was, I believe he was about 10 years old, and then that was it. So I thought that was just the end of Richard's line. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos, please follow the links on the side of the page. Please select thumbs up that you like the video, it helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.